know scientifically that you touched her body, and we know that you put her in the cemetery. Oh, God. This is going downhill fast. They're looking to crucify somebody. Whether you did it or not, I really have a feeling you know more than what you're telling us. Whoever wants to paint your damn picture and make it look like I'm a monster, there's not like a new body. It had nothing to do with it. For years, police thought they knew who killed 11-year-old Jody Perrick and dumped her body in a cemetery. A reserve police officer, a man investigators described as a monster. Tonight, for the first time, Target 8 is taking you inside the interrogation room as detectives zeroed in on who turned out to be the wrong man. But their investigation sent him to prison anyway, not for murder, but for lying to police. In this special report, Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker used the Freedom of Information Act to obtain nearly eight hours of interviews that raised the question, who told the biggest lies? We went through nearly eight hours of videotaped interrogations that show police repeatedly lied to Raymond McCann, hoping their lies would help them find the truth, a perfectly legal tactic. But the lies McCann was accused of telling landed him in prison. I was a hostage. I wasn't a prisoner. I was a hostage. The videotaped interrogations document only part of the 20 or so times detectives interviewed Ray McCann over the years. They show how police turned their focus on the married father and little league coach who worked as a reserve police officer in the town where Jody was killed, who said he was out trying to find her. Police felt his stories weren't adding up. Though McCann, who had never been in trouble before, repeatedly told them he was struggling to recall details of a day he would rather forget. All the hard work they were doing, it seemed like it was setting me up, you know, not trying to find out who really committed this crime. Constantine Police Chief James Bedell had come out of retirement for one reason, to solve this case. What is, uh, today is uh, November 5th, but another three days, Monday, Monday is going to be... Uh, Three years. Three years since Jody's mom found her body in the Constantine Township Cemetery. The fifth grader had been sexually assaulted and strangled. Her body dumped. Oh, I, I know you've been talked to several times. Uh, and this shouldn't take too long because you're going to tell me the truth. Uh, you got nothing to hide, correct? Correct. It's the same story McCann had I told to from the start. Texas. He had been home all day that day, November 8th, 2007. Uh, <laughs> Begun. Played a video game all afternoon until his boys got home from school. Went to the store, dollar store, um, came back. What time did you go to the dollar store? Oh, kids get out of school. I think I left at three, I believe, and went straight up there. Um, mom took me little laser guns. His wife, he says, got home a little before five, made dinner. He helped his son with homework. They ate around six. Tell me what, from 6 o'clock on, what went on? Um, 6 o'clock on, I know I was watching TV, I was watching the news. Um, well, all we did. His kids, he says, were getting ready for bed. That's when the mother came over, somewhere around 8. Your mother came over? No, um, Joe, the mother. Joy's mother? Yeah. Jody was missing. McCann described his search for Jody, the DNS store, around buildings, the baseball fields, to a home where his own mom and sister lived, where he says he found a bike that turned out not to be Jody's. He says he checked by the boardwalk, down by the river. So I walked down there, flashlight, checking behind the buildings. It was McCann who suggested Jody's family check the cemetery. He also suggested the same to Constantine police officer Marcus Donker. When we were driving around, I go, kind of like, uh, we didn't know the night was going to end up that way, but kind of joking around because it was just after Halloween. I go, let's go check the cemetery. You wanted to check the cemetery, why didn't you go check it? Because I needed to check, I wanted to check in with Donker. <laughs> I don't know. His insistence on searching the cemetery, then not checking it right away, is what made police suspect McCann right from the beginning. Police say holes in his stories didn't help. So in these interviews, you have to ask some personal questions. I'm told that you're, you would have an affair at the drop of a hat if a woman would, would be 
person. I flirt with women. I mean, better that you yeah. have interest in women than guys. Uh, what about uh, young girls like Jody? No. No. He acknowledges talking to a woman he didn't know on his walkie-talkie, maybe the day before Jody went missing, maybe not, and how maybe he went looking for that woman. The chief is bothered by the results of McCann's polygraph tests. And whether you did it or not, I really have a feeling you know more than what you're telling us. If you're protecting somebody, that's... Oh, God, somebody. you know what? I wouldn't protect the whole family. I would not do it. The interview turns again to the cemetery where Jody's body was found. And if I told you somebody seen you driving out of there before that body was found, then that's BS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I never went in there. The only time we near there was a nickel million dollars up near the gas station. The reason that we question you is two polygraphs, mm -hmm. your idea to go look at the cemetery. And yeah, I know. But to me... You're driving around the day before so the walkie-talkies trying to pick up some chick, and it's just weird. No, <laughs> well, you're all weird. I guess I'm weird, but I tell you what, there ain't no way in hell, man. Five months later, McCann was back, this time facing state police detective Brian Fuller, part of a cold case team, asking again about his search for details of a night more than three years earlier. Remember all the places we went. Says he wonders if he's blending one night with another. I thought we got gas, and that might have even been before we, I think we got gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, we're so sure now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was another night, or I think we were in the trailer park. I don't know if that rings a bell, or... McCann says he didn't know he was a suspect until an officer read him his rights that night and asked to take a picture of his hands. Well, I remember looking at my hands, and my hands, and that's right there I knew what the hell? <laughs> Police took his truck and his clothes that night, later his DNA. The detective assures him he's not the only suspect and that he is on McCann's side. Be honest, completely honest with you. Um, the, 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 the police officer on duty that night is not ruled out. You with me? Officer Walker? Yeah. I'm around here to help you. You know, I want this as bad as you guys do. I want to know. I don't want to go to my grave not knowing what happened to this little girl. I don't want to. I'd like to have my job back, to be honest with you. I love being on the police department. Three months later, McCann is back with the same detective. Do I have to tell you about your rights? Okay. Okay? You understand? I'm not going to tell him, right? Because this is going downhill fast for you. I don't understand why. And the only, only thing that is going to help you is for you to be truthful. And I know, I've seen it myself. I know you haven't been. The cold case detective tells McCann he knows he lied about being home most of the day Jody was killed, that his alibi is shot, that they have him on surveillance video around town that as a reserve police officer, he owned two pairs of handcuffs, not just one as McCann insisted. They were two of the alleged lies that led to perjury charges. Evidence shows Jody's wrist had been bound. I am not going to jail for somebody else's. It's one of 86 times he denies any involvement during more than seven hours of videotaped interrogations. This is my life we're talking about. For the hell I've been through, my family. What did you say? Did anything wrong? Then the detective plays his biggest bluffs. We know scientifically that you touched her body. Did and we know without a doubt. You put her in the cemetery. Oh, God, Brian, no, I did not. No, I did not. That doesn't make you the killer, Ray. I know, but you know what? I did not put her there. If I touched her at all, it was one I was pulling the mother away. If I happened to touch her, then that's how it happened. Later, in an interview that wasn't recorded, 
They asked McCann how they could have found his DNA on Jody and her DNA on him and in his pickup. He says it could have happened when he hugged Jody's mom and when the mom sat in his truck, which she said never happened. Police say that was another of McCann's lies that amounted to perjury. But police have since confirmed to Target 8 that they also weren't telling the truth. They didn't really have that DNA evidence. It was a trick, a perfectly legal lie. This case has already been reviewed by the prosecutor's office. And the evidence about you is insurmountable. You gotta promise me one thing. I don't know who did this, but if they hold me for whatever reasons for more questions, you don't give up looking. Promise me that. Maybe the detective tells him he's covering for somebody else, or he accidentally killed Jody, then panicked. They say they checked his computer, found he had been on porn sites that day. They're gonna say that you, you killed her. You killed her for sexual gratification. And they're going to use the porn stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going to... You know where they're going to go with it. And I'm telling you that you can prevent that. Now I leave here, I'm going to try to get some answers. This is bull man. You have to you know what? I don't know if you believe in God, I hope you do. I sure you know what? Someday we're all gonna stand in front of them and you guys are gonna find out the truth. You know that? You guys are gonna find out the truth. And I did not put her there. You know, one day we'll stand in front of the Lord and we'll all know. Yeah, and I guess hopefully well, me and you're standing by each other and we'll say, I ain't told you. After the break, the interrogation intensifies as police zero in on the wrong man. That's coming up in 60 seconds. And now back to our story. Police are after one of their own, Ray McCann, a reserve officer who's become the lead suspect in the murder of 11-year-old Jody Perrick. The interrogation intensifies. Ken Colker's special report continues now. They're looking to crucify somebody. More than three and a half years after Jody was killed, state police detective Brian Fuller is joined by a new face from the state police who says Constantine needs answers. I need you to do the best you can to remember, which I know you can. Okay. I'm just nervous. I'm here. I've called through this so many I know. times. McCann describes his day. That video game at home. Maybe checking porn sites. Later buying laser guns with his sons at the Dollar General. This police say is another of his big lies. That his sons say they didn't go to the store that day. McCann recalls his search and eventually turning left into the cemetery. That's where I see everybody running around screaming. I pull my truck up to a certain point, get out, run up there, and that's when I realized the mother had her. And that's when I realized she was dead. You could tell. Knowing that we have the times and the phone calls and the movements, um, is that concerning to you at all? About times? Mm -hmm. I don't know exact times. That's my problem. What time was what right. that night? I didn't have nothing to do with this girl's death. Listen, don't say that, because I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't. Trust me. <laughs> I know different, okay? The detective suggests a theory that McCann found her body in the cemetery earlier, which is why he kept telling people to go search there. What we're saying is you found her, but you were afraid because you didn't want them to think you put her there. And maybe, this is their thought, maybe Ray is living a double life. I mean, Ray says he's a Christian. Ray says he's this, that, a coach, whatever. But when mom leaves to work, Ray trolls the streets looking to pick someone up. Gets on porn before he does it. Off, goes to a religious site, a couple of them to feel better, and he leaves the house. 
They can paint their damn picture, whatever they want to do. I didn't have nothing to do with this damn thing. I went out there, did my job that night. Supposedly, I guess I didn't get to a I, I believe you. you know, As a matter of fact, this I is a hell you. I'm going that gets back to the, that gets back the detective floats another theory. Jody visited McCann's home, then flipped out because she wanted to date McCann's son, who did not want to date her. You take control, you say, hey, settle down, relax, and something happens in that process. Even to the point where she almost is going to hurt herself, and she gets handcuffs put on her because she's going crazy. Okay? Okay. What else is there, right? I don't know you tell me, but that's all bulls. Then another police bluff. Again, a perfectly legal police lie. We have the full investigation. I told you, we just don't know the why, the little part in there, okay? We know we have a dead girl. We know that Ray's involved, okay? We've told you that. So they're, they're going to stick, what, me in jail for something I had no part of? Is that how the system works? Guys, I don't, I don't know what you want from me. You want a confession that I can't give you? But I didn't, guys. I didn't find her. I didn't put it there. I didn't kill her. Sorry, guys. This upset, all right? Last year, McCann was sent to prison for 20 months after pleading no contest to one of five perjury charges. Without the plea, he said, prosecutors were threatening years behind bars. I took the plea because it was the quickest way to get home to my family. It wasn't that I was guilty of anything. But last September, three months before McCann's release, came this bombshell. The arrest of Daniel Furlong and Jody's murder, complete with real DNA evidence after he tried snatching another girl. Furlong had lived blocks from Jody, but was never a suspect. She said, will you let me go? And I said, I can't let you go. Wait. Furlong confessed to killing Jody, dumping her body, and working alone. Now, do you know Mr. McCann? I don't know the one that they showed on TV. You no, don't know him? No, I don't know him. I know the grandfather. You saw everything in the paper about what was going on with him. What did you think then? I just thought I was in the clear. A few weeks later, the new Constantine police chief visited McCann in prison. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, good. You know, he's going to come in and apologize to me. They're going to get me out of prison, you know, tell me they got the right person. And... But according to audio of that meeting, that did not happen. The person that we arrested is a friend of yours. Um, I don't know who he is. The chief gave him one last chance to come clean about Jody's death. I'm serious, man. Don't let that one go close. Don't let that happen. Whether it's Dan or whether it's somebody else, somebody is pulling all the cards. And your, your picture is on the face of every one of those cards. Now, state police officials refused a request for an interview, but emailed a statement to Target 8 saying for the first time in writing that they are convinced Daniel Furlong acted alone finally clearing McCann in the crime. State police also defended their techniques in the interviews, saying they are quote unquote, accepted in legal methods. Now we have complete coverage on this case at woodtv.com, including all of those interrogation videos. Tomorrow at six, we take our investigation to an expert and to those who pursued, pursued Ray McCann. Wow. Fascinating, Ken. And mind boggling and actually frightening to watch all of those videos as well. But do you have any updates on the main players in this case? Well, Furlong's, <clears throat> excuse me, in prison for the rest of his life. Um, as far as Ray McCann, he is now living outside of Constantine and he's looking for a job. Wow. It's interesting, the police did not want to let go of that theory and they were using every technique in the book right. because they were fixated on this theory they had. Yeah, some would argue that they had some blinders on and he was, he was right in their sights. Yeah. Understandably so, but again, it draws into question some of those police interrogation techniques as well. Yes, it does. Interesting Unreal. story. Thank you, Ken.